Mental illness in my opinion is both biological and spiritual. I see psychology as the combination of those two. Together they produce the variety of categories in mental illness we keep hearing about. After all every single human being after Adam and Eve is born. Therefore, every single human being has a beginning in birth and its conclusion in death which means our problems resides in our lives. Somewhere in our lives, live problems. These problems can be seen or unseen. They can be biological or spiritual. Whichever way we look at it, we humans are scheduled to suffer life. Some will suffer from knowing things that otherwise others won't suffer from just by not knowing. Some will suffer from not knowing things that others won't suffer from because they already know. So whether we know or don't know the result would still be suffering. Most of all, how can a person solve an internal problem without understanding our body and our soul? If the goal is to be joyful in life, how is it that we don't know how to be joyful? If human beings were in fact joyful, they wouldn't need all this entertainment. We can only fix ourselves 100% but we are unable to fix others 100%. Our fears are about things that haven't happened or exist. We suffer from our memories and our possibilities. As our bodies grow and develop our minds might not. For instance a child who enjoyed his or her childhood may find the transition from childhood to adulthood very challenging. The fear that is born from insecurities could lead a person to a mental illness. Some would try to erase their memories with liquor or drugs. Everything that is physical is in constant motion while everything that is spiritual is at a standstill. From the atoms to the cosmos all physical things are in motion, even our bodies. We are born from our mother's body cyclical motion. Since we are often in relation with our physical cycle, we tend to be mechanical and it is often hard to get out of that chain reaction. The only way we could stop the chain reaction is to switch our minds into spiritual mode. Our happiness or sadness are a reaction to our physical cycle while our body itself remain unharmed. In a sense, happiness or sadness is non-existent in the physical world. We could make ourselves happy or sad at any given moment without the help of an external force. In other words happiness or sadness are perception but not reality. If you are sick and go to the doctor, the doctor will ask you where do you feel the pain? Because only you, know where the pain is and how much it hurts. Some children desire to be adults but once adult they might experience great disappointment. Some would feel robbed of their innocence while others might feel burdened by their innocence. However, true happiness is found not in the physical cycles but in the spiritual world. Why is it that a mother shows affection to her child not because the baby is a life but only because he is of her flesh? Why is it that once connected spiritually we can be affectionate to total strangers? What made the Virgin Mary so amazing is not only because she gave birth to God. I think what made the Virgin Mary distinct from all other women is the fact that she loved her child not because he was of her flesh but because he was himself the life in all men. Personally I couldn't think of any other being who could have fulfilled the first commandment of God better than the Virgin Mary. She literally loved the Lord with all her heart and with all her soul and all of her mind and with all her strength. And mind you did all of that not because Jesus was of her flesh but because he was life itself. How many mother love their child only because the baby is of their flesh? Isn't that called self-loving? Isn't that hypocrisy? I want to bring you to realize that the marriages which produced us, didn't produce equal humans. The reason we are not equal is because there are six types of people in this world. One daddy's boys, two mommy's boys, three neutral boys, four, daddy's girls, five mommy's girls, six neutral girls. Example 1 If your father was a daddy's boy and married a daddy's girl, most likely you would have a very responsible family whereby the mother isn't feminist and would hold a neutered household. Example 2 If your father was a daddy's boy and married a mommy's girl, most likely the marriage would have problems of gender equality or the family would hold two very distinct opposite sets of values, which would affect the development of the children. Example 3 If your father was a mommy's boy and married a daddy's girl, the relationship would be even worse than an example too, where the family would exercise several disrespects because the man would hold feminist view he gained from the brainwashing of his mother and would try it in his marriage. The woman would automatically disrespect such values because she is a daddy's girl. Example 4 If your father is neutral and gets married to a daddy's girl in some instance the relationship would work but a neutral man is like a nomad. He cares only about godly things and cares less in reproducing society because he has no real respect for mankind. To a woman that is the worst, she would feel neglected or brought to a lower level. A neutral man can only live in the extremes of goodness or wickedness. They are other great religious fathers or exterminators of humanity. This is why it is extremely important that humanity keeps its marriages pure when producing children. A pure marriage would produce pure seeds biologically and spiritually. Children born as a result of sin will carry biological diseases as well as psychological problems. 